Hey, it's time for chapter two. We are still reading from The Enormous Egg by Oliver Butterworth. Here we go. Taking care of that egg was an awful chore. The trouble was that the thing was so big that the poor hen couldn't handle it. You see, when a hen sits on her eggs, she keeps turning them over every now and then so they'll get warmed evenly all around. I guess everyone must know that anyway. But Pop says when you're writing something, you can't take anything for granted, because you never know who might read it. So if I start explaining something you know about already, just skip that part and go on. I suppose there might be somebody who'd lived in a city all his life, and he wouldn't know too much about how a hen takes care of her eggs and things like that. So I guess I better take Pop's advice and explain things as I go along. He must know what he's talking about, what with his newspaper and all. Well, this hen couldn't budge that big egg, so I had to come in three or four times a day and turn it over for her. I piled the straw up a good I piled the straw up good around it to help keep it warm, and between the two of us we managed pretty well in the daytime, but it kept me kind of busy. Luckily school was over by this time, or I don't think I could have done it. As it was, it cut into my fishing something terrible. I'd no sooner get out on Loon Lake in the rowboat and throw back a couple of sunfish that got caught by mistake when it would be time to cut back home and turn over that egg. And the hen would get fidgety if I stayed away too long. I guess she expected me to be right on time. I was afraid for a while that she wasn't going to stay on the job, but she did, and so did I. I didn't know what to do about nighttime, because Mom said she didn't want me getting up in the middle of the night, and Pop agreed with her. They figured it might interfere with my sleep, and maybe they were right, but I would have done it anyway. I would have done almost anything to have that egg hatch out. You don't have a chance like that every day. Anyway, Pop said he'd turn the egg over before he went to bed at night, and if I turned it over the first thing in the morning, then we'd leave the rest up to fate. I don't know what he meant by fate exactly, because one night I had poison ivy on my leg and couldn't sleep very good, so I got up and went out to the hen house to turn the egg, since I was awake anyway, and who should I meet coming out of the hen house but Pop? He kind of ahem, coughed in an embarrassed way and said he couldn't get to sleep because it was so hot, so he'd just come out to see that everything was all right. I noticed it was 3 a.m. by the clock in the kitchen. I asked him at breakfast if he'd been getting up every night like that. Pop poked around in his cereal bowl as if he'd found a button or something, and he said he wouldn't lose sleep over any egg no matter how big it was. It was only when he was awake, anyway, that he went out to the hen house, he said. Mom smiled a little at the corners of her mouth, as if she thought Pop was pretty funny, but she didn't say anything. Well, I really had my hands full. First thing in the morning, I'd tear out to the hen coop and turn over the egg. By now, we had the nest all fixed up in the corner of the hen house, fenced off so it was nice and private. I'd give the hen some scratch feed and fill her water pan. Then, on the way back to the house, I'd take in an armful of stove wood from the shed, and by that time it would be late enough so I could bring up old Ezekiel up from the cellar and put him in the chicken yard. After that, I was supposed to milk the coat, the goat, but Cynthia said she'd go and do that for me, since the big egg was such a lot of trouble. That was pretty nice of her, I'll have to admit, because she doesn't like milking too much. After breakfast, Cynthia would help Mom in the kitchen, and I would go out down to the print shop with Pop. If it was newspaper day, I'd help Mr. Simmons wrap up papers for mailing, and then I'd deliver papers around town on my bike. Other days, I might sweep up slugs of type lying around on the floor and melt them down in the iron pot. Then afterwards, I'd pick up Joe Chapigny, who lives across the street from us, and we'd go down to Loon Lake fishing. But every few hours, I would come back and turn over that egg. I wasn't going to take any chances. One morning, about a week later, a man came into the house and wanted to see the egg. He said he was from the newspaper in Laconia, and they wanted to run a story on this big egg that our hen had laid. I took him out to the nest, 
and he took some pictures and asked questions. He poked the egg with his finger, and the hen nipped at him. He wasn't too pleased about that, and he went off sucking his finger. A while after that, two men came from the Christian Science Monitor down in Boston. They said they'd seen something in the press about a hen that laid an enormous egg up in freedom, and they wanted to do a piece on it because their paper was always interested in miraculous things like that. They took pictures of the egg and the hen and Ezekiel and one of my sister feeding the chickens, as if she ever did that, and they asked all kinds of questions. They wanted to know why we called the rooster Ezekiel and what the circulation of the Freedom Sentinel was and how many people lived in freedom and all sorts of things that didn't have anything to do with the egg. Then they measured the egg with a tape and weighed it on some hand scales they brought with them. It was 15 inches around the narrow way, and it weighed three pounds and a quarter. The men stayed to lunch and had two helpings of pie. The next week, my Aunt Grace sent us a clipping from the monitor. She lives down in Keene and teaches high school there. The clipping had a big picture of my sister feeding the hens and a small picture of the egg. Underneath the picture, there was this article. Here's what the article looks like. Written just like it would be in a newspaper. Mammoth egg laid in freedom. Freedom, New Hampshire, June 24th. Freedom, New Hampshire may be a small town, but it sure can produce a big egg. A hen belonging to the Walter Twitchell family of this town recently laid an egg, which may turn out to be the largest hen's egg in history. Their hen laid this astonishing egg on June 16th, Mr. Twitchell declared. She had shown some signs of uneasiness before laying the remarkable egg, which measures almost a foot and a half around and weighs nearly three and a half pounds. Mr. and Mrs. Twitchell have two children, a girl, Cynthia, 10, and a boy, Nathan, aged 12. Mr. Twitchell is the owner of a owner and editor of the Freedom Sentinel, a country newspaper with a circulation of about 800. The family has decided to let the hen sit on the egg in hopes that it will hatch out. Mr. Twitchell admits that he doesn't know what will come of it. Something surprising, Mr. Twitchell guesses. Well, the three weeks were finally up. That's the time it takes for a hen's egg to hatch out, in case you didn't know. But nothing happened. I kept going out to the nest every little while all day long, but nothing doing. Pop went out three times after supper. No luck. I must have looked pretty glum, and Mom said not to worry. Maybe an egg this size needed more time than a regular one. A whole week went by this way, and even Mom didn't seem to have much hope for it anymore. Pop looked really discouraged. I think he'd kind of set his heart on that egg hatching out almost as much as I had. One evening, after a whole month had gone by, he looked at me for a while with his face sort of screwed up. Nate, he said, you counted on that egg hatching out, didn't you? I said, yes, I had. And you've worked hard all this time taking care of the egg and feeding the hen specially, and now it looks like as if you wouldn't have anything to show for your pains, doesn't it? I nodded, but I didn't say anything. He walked over to me and put his hand on my shoulder. Well, Nate, I guess we have to expect a certain amount of hard luck every now and then, and we just have to take it. After all, it was pretty amazing just to find an egg like that, even if it doesn't hatch out. What are you going to do with it? Mom wanted to know. Well, it isn't strictly fresh anymore, Pop said. I suppose we might give it to some museum. They could preserve it somehow and put a card on it saying it was a gift of Nathan Twitchell of Freedom New... I don't want to give it to a museum yet, I said. I want to be sure about it first. It might be a five-week egg. You can never tell about something like this. It's not like an ordinary egg. But how long are you going to wait, Cynthia said. Are you just going to go on taking care of that old egg all summer? Remember, Pop said he was going to take his camping up in Fraconia Notch sometime this summer. Pop sat down on the sofa and stretched out his legs. Now, Nate, he said, 
You deserve a lot of credit for keeping at this thing the way you have. Just don't try to follow a lost cause farther than it's worth, will you? Oh, no, I said, but I guess I was more disappointed than I let, than I let on. Just to myself, I decided that I would give that egg one more week, and if nothing happened then, well, that would be the end of it.